Hey everyone, this is Chris Hendren at OPT again. This is part two of our series on Maxim DL. In part one, we covered the basic setup of the camera control window, an exposed guide and setup tabs, as well as showing how to set up some basic guiding parameters and how to take an exposure. We're gonna go into a little bit more detail in this case, showing how to set up a multi-exposure image as well as doing changes and adjustments when necessary to the guide parameters. Okay, so from the Expose tab, if you go to Find DSO, you can see that it automatically sets the exposure to 10 seconds and binning at two. You can adjust the binning of your CCD camera if it's capable down here if you click on the binning box, and you can adjust your exposure as shown previously in part one. Now we're just running a simulator right now on the filter wheel, but it's set up with four positions as well as additional slots which are available. Your filter wheel will have more or fewer slots depending on the design, so make sure you set it up correctly with the filter wheels chosen. So default here is luminance, but if I tell it I want to go to a red filter, when I tell it to take the exposure, first thing it will do is confirm that it's on red. Now, your filter wheel will take an extra few seconds to actually shift from the filter it's on to the proper filter. This may be grayed out in the meantime while it's doing that, so we'll stop that. If you go to options, you'll see that there are several options here for setting up single exposures. Usually by default, you have what's called simple auto dark. That means the first thing that Maxim DL wants to do is take a dark frame. It will save that information and then subtract that from future frames of the same exposure time. So as long as I keep my exposure at 20 seconds and my binning at two, it will reuse that dark frame to clean up the images. You can also do full calibration for taking darks, flats, and bias, but that's less useful from a focusing routine. You can also do no calibration if you don't want to see any sort of dark frame, and that allows you to actually choose which sort of frame you want to take on a case-by-case -case basis. So if you want to take a dark frame, you can tell it it's a dark. It will actually tag the file as a dark frame, which will help in locating it later. So we want a light frame with a red filter, 20 seconds. And what it will do, we hit start, it starts counting down the exposure right here. Now note a few things. We have subframe not clicked on. That means we're looking at the full range of the sensor. We're not cropped in on it. We are bin two by two. So the width and height numbers are half of what they would be if they were one by one, where they go to a thousand by 800. So just note that the binning will affect these numbers here, which tell you how many pixels wide and high your image will be. If I do the same exposure at one by one binning, what will change is the picture will get twice as large in each dimension and the stars will be fainter, just like you would see in a real image where you're not combining the pixels together. So a couple more seconds here and boom, just exactly as stated. The auto save menu here is where you can set up multiple exposures. So if you click several of these on, you can choose the filter type. We have LRGB if you want a full color image. You can type in up to a four digit suffix here. You can choose the exposure for each. In this case, I'm just gonna set it up to do one second each. We have binning control independently. So you may decide you want to bin your color two by two and then leave your luminance at one by one. Readout mode, normal is pretty standard for most cameras. You rarely will mess with this. And then repeat is saying how many of each exposure you want to take. So if you do this, it notes 12 seconds because I now have three frames each at one second with no delay. This right here is enough to take a series of exposures so if I hit OK and hit Start right here, it's gonna move the filter, it exposes. There's my first exposure. Moves again, takes another picture. You notice how the image shrank because I'm binned. It also tells me which filter I'm on, what the exposure number is, and the elapsed time. Now there's delay because the camera takes time to download each time. But at this point, it's actually saving the images to the hard drive for later retrieval and stacking into a full LRGB image. 
because this is a simulator you don't really see any difference between the color filters but on your real camera you will see that information okay so that covers how to set up an exposure sequence one more thing I want to cover while I'm here is how to adjust auto guiding parameters part one I showed you how to set up auto guiding by exposing the guide tab choosing a star doing the calibration here and then telling it to track however different scopes with different focal lengths are going to need different guiding parameters usually the default is one second guiding with aggressiveness of eight for both X and Y what this means is it's a 1 to 10 scale with 10 being 100% and 1 being 10%. So if the guider sees the star move between exposures, most of that movement is of course due to the gears in the mount, especially when you're shooting at a wide image at a short focal length. But as focal length increases and you're dealing more with the effects of seeing an atmospheric turbulence and small mount errors, part of the error is not a result of the mount, part of it's a result of the atmosphere. So as your focal length increases, your aggressiveness generally needs to drop. So with a short refractor, 8 is a good setting. With an 8-inch RC or SCT, you may want to drop the aggressiveness to 5. With a larger scope, you may adjust the aggressiveness even lower. So what that means is if between guide exposures, if a star moves by one pixel to the right, it's saying how much of the required correction it actually implements. So if it figures that all of that error is from the mount, you set aggressiveness to 10. In each case, it makes a one pixel correction, the next exposure. However, if half of that was from the mount and half of that was from the atmosphere, then aggressiveness of five, you'll correct the part that was actually due to the mount and the atmosphere might move the star the other direction, the next exposure meaning that if you set aggressiveness too high your guide graph jumps back and forth also for fainter stars you want to set longer exposures and generally you want to make sure that you're set up on the proper camera for your guiding you also have settings here where you can adjust calibration time that's the number of seconds it moves in each direction so if i set the calibration down which you would for a long focal length system. Now when I calibrate, it only takes four seconds between exposures to move. So here it's made a movement. It's taking another exposure. And you can see the red line is shorter because I only moved four seconds instead of 10. The last video of the line was significantly longer. Now with a short focal length system, you're going to need a longer calibration time. You want it to move the motors farther. If you don't move at least 10 pixels in every direction, Maxim will give you an error because you haven't calibrated enough. It can't tell whether the error was due to tracking, atmosphere, or actual intentional movement. So as you adjust those settings here, you can increase the calibration time back up and you'll see the difference here. It will actually shift a longer distance. Now, what you don't get in simulator that you'll get in real life is it will actually take 10 seconds to send a pulse to the motor to move it. It doesn't take the next exposure immediately afterward. So that does differ from what we're showing here, but you get the idea. The correction is now longer because it's pulsing the motors for more seconds and that's a good correction then you say I want to guide on this star here it doesn't have to be the same star it calibrated on go to track click start and now it's set up guiding you can then go back to auto save change your exposure time let's say we want 10 seconds each and we can now start and at this point we've now set it up to take an exposure with each of the filters in sequence while guiding. So this will now get you to the point where you can take a guided series of exposures through Maxim DL. This again is part two of our Maxim DL series. We'll be covering more aspects and more advanced features in future videos. Once again, this is Chris at OPT. Thanks for watching.